This is All right, normally Winnie how this goes, everything. we do three stories, and hosts, it's the three biggest Gary stories of the week. However, we are in the uh, the dog days of summer. There's not a whole lot going on. Uh, there's the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, all that good stuff. And we'll get to all that in the blurbs. Uh, that's going to be a new segment that we'll do whenever we do not have three big stories. We're just going to do a rapid fire of, of the latest stuff that comes out. But there was a really interesting story that came out on Yahoo Sports. Pat Forty wrote it. Uh, he's got a piece up on an interview he did with Josh Rosen. We're going to discuss this for a little while now. Um, it, it, Chris, you hadn't seen this yet, have you? Haven't at all. You you called me about it, talked to me about it this uh, morning, and um, I was busy working. And I said, let's let's treat me like the listeners that might not know it, and just give me give me the story, the the summed up version. All right, so these are basically the highlights of it. Uh, he was given a paper written by the former UCLA quarterback along with two other people, and the working title for it is The Modernization of Collegiate Athletics as an Incentive for Graduation. Now, Rosen told Forty, I'm not against the NCAA. I do strongly believe in the student-athlete experience, and I don't think the free market is the way to go. I also don't want a system that was created in the 1950s to stay the way it was. I want it to be more like the iPhone, constantly updating to stay current with the times. I want this idea to get people talking. I want this to sort of be the WD-40 that unlocks the stuck gears of how to compensate student-athletes. I like the premise, right? So, Forty says in his article, uh, basically, Rosen and company envision athletes being able to profit within the NCAA's established amateurism philosophy. Instead of rallying against it, they want to work with it. Under this plan, athletes can profit from various revenue opportunities that arise during their college careers after they graduate. That means no diploma, no money. So here's the highlights from the document. I'll go on and give you these, and then we can discuss. Amateurism remains changed, or remains unchanged. Excuse me. There was a typo there. <laughs> uh, independent third-party licenses, names, and likeness. Uh, no contact between brands and student-athletes. Student athlete receives money only upon graduation. The NCAA gains additional revenue stream with no additional cost or infrastructure. And NCAA member institutions will increase licensing revenue through reopen channels such as video games and other group license opportunities created or bolstered by the program. For example, like uh, licensees will have to negotiate licenses with NCAA member institutions to use their rights in conjunction with such licensees group license with respect to student athletes, etc., I love the idea. It, it Now, it's not going to do away with everything. You're still going to have the black market stuff that goes on. Well, especially for college basketball. This doesn't help college basketball one bit. Because those guys are not close to diplomas. In football, you can graduate, get a diploma in three years. Yes. You have to stay three years anyway. So in football, in baseball, in all these others, it, it helps, right? In basketball, this will not help one bit. No. However, in the plan, it does not say anything about, like, when you graduate, right? Like, the money will still be around for you if you graduate. There's no timetable so on it. Th all right, that's the other question. We're putting large sums of money in the hands of people who have kind of been shown they can't be trusted. What happens to the million dollars that somebody pays for to a Tongalova to be their spokesman or whatever to this escrow account that goes to him, but he doesn't graduate. He leaves as a junior. And, okay, what happens to that money? That's a good question. Because I'm not okay with that going to the NCAA. I, I wish I could answer that question. I haven't read th – there's 36 pages in this document. Now, what I would do – this is literally a guy that just heard about this, just learned about it. If, if I'm going to kind of throw things at the wall and see if they stick kind of deal, my thought would be you've got five years from the time you leave college to graduate, okay? Okay. So if you want to come back over the summers and get your degree so you get this money, great. If after five years you don't graduate, then you can name a charity that the, the money be donated to in your name. I like that idea. I'm okay with that. I, I think that'd be fine. Because I don't, know, I don't know what that hurts, and there's no reason. The NCAA already makes gazillions of dollars off these players. Yeah. They don't need to keep this extra money 
that would be paid for by extra advertisers. Well, I think if if you're the NCAA, this makes it a little more likely that you would be interested in doing it, right? Well, the NCAA so, can draw interest off the money. So if you're in college for a minimum of three years to get a degree and, and you're paid, quote-unquote, by this other company and it sits in escrow, the reason you, you pay – you know your insurance and escrow toward your house is the the banks that are doing that are banking that money. They're they're drawing interest off of your money and then yeah. paying your insurance. Um, it, it would be an opportunity for the the NCAA to make money that way, but the money is not theirs. The principal money paid is not theirs. The they've got several different revenue splits or, or that they can do. Put that money into scholarship pools. Now they they do I'm, bring I'm, that up. I'm on, I'm I'm okay with That's, that too. Here here's the breakdown for okay. their different revenue splits, right? So they've got individual deals, revenue split number one, and revenue split number two. Revenue split number one is fifty percent of that money goes to the player pool. It doesn't go okay. to an individual player, just the player pool. Okay. Then you've got twenty five percent that goes to the clearinghouse. The NCAA gets fifteen percent, and then ten percent to a general scholarship fund. That's revenue split one. Revenue split two is 25% to the player pool, 25% to the individual player, 25% to the general scholarship fund, 15% to the NCAA, 10% to the clearinghouse. I tend to like that one a little more. Then you've got the individual deals, right? The individual deal is 50% goes to the individual player. And then 10% goes to the player pool, 25% to the clearinghouse, 10% 10% to the NCAA, and then 5% to the General Scholarship Fund. So everybody is getting a piece of the pie. And it makes sense that way when you graduate, you can get the money. This makes sense for the people that are not going to the NFL early, that are not going, you know, that are not going to be major league draft picks, you know, first round, all that kind of mess. I love the the when, premise of it because there's there's several on, different depending there, on how much of the individual money that you're going to get, you might decide I'm going to come back to college another year. Yeah, I mean if you're a fourth string four string draft pick, third string draft pick, third string third round draft pick, that's still <laughs> that's still a decent pick. Those guys are yeah. going to play. They're going to get meaningful playing time in the NFL, but you could make another million dollars, eight hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. I don't know what. Coming back to college for another year, it's less than what you could make in the NFL if you make it. But it's there's no gamble. Like you just have to stay another year, and the yeah. only thing you're hurting is do you get hurt and then maybe not get drafted. Now the cool thing is the the student athlete participation. You don't have to participate in this if you don't want to. That's right. Which it's a little bit crazy not to. I, I doubt there would be very many people that would do that, but. Um, from that, there's also the the different options as far as local advertising. There's going to be a different split, uh, and I have not read through and found all that out yet. But you, you can find all this on Yahoo Sports. Um, on this, local advertising, regional advertising, and national advertising all have different ways that they go about licensing players, paying, all that good stuff. So with this setup, it's close to an Olympic model. Yep. Close because collegiate athletes then could be used in Nike commercials and Wheaties commercials. Whatever. And whatever. I mean, yeah. Just. Like so so when somebody like Johnny Manziel wins the Heisman as a redshirt freshman or Lamar Jackson as yep. a, a what was he, a sophomore? Sure. No, yeah. So at that point you can do just about anything. Yep. Like you can you can be used Tim T, but when you're a freshman and you know that your probably skills don't equate to the NFL to where you know you're not only going to start for four years, but you're going to be a major contributor and a face of a program for four yeah. years, you have an opportunity to capitalize on that for four years. Yes. Yes. Tebow for sure. Tebow would have had a cult following and would have I mean th- this is this is a decade too late. Yeah, for guys oh, like him. Well, it, Jalen Hurts at Alabama, yep. like he may not start this year, but the last two years he did. He was a true freshman <clears throat> leading Alabama to a twenty-six and two record. Yeah, you know, it, that's the way it goes. Tua Tonga Valoa, it would work great for this year, right? He's going to be so a massive if he if he wins the starting job. Let's 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 change let's change gears on this same subject for a minute 
but but move on to the person that that is the face of this right now. I said before the whole draft thing started, if I had to take one quarterback, it was going to either be Josh Rosen or Lamar yep. Jackson. Yeah, this is the reason why I'm okay with Rosen and his picks and or his um, Jay Cutler demeanor that some people criticized him for. This guy's smart. This guy oh, has yeah, a head on his much. shoulders. He is a problem solver, and all I want in life is to surround myself with problem solvers. Being a guy that has been in management most of my life and then um, owning my own business now, I literally could care less about your abilities in so many things if you can solve problems yourself. You can think through things logically and intelligently and, and find solutions for them because that's all life is. It's, it's just one big math problem. And, and if you do enough math problems and you and you do them well enough, you you get to retire, you get to survive, you get to move on um, to the next stage of life. And I think great quarterbacks are your best problem solvers. I don't think it's a, a coincidence that Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and Eli and and you know Philip Rivers, these guys that that have succeeded and succeeded for so long without any unbelievable physical attribute or character. Yeah. They don't have Ben Roethlisberger's size and monster arm or Michael Vick's just crazy speed and power arm. They did it with their brains. There are 30 quarterbacks that went undrafted that had better arms and better tools than all of those guys. Yeah. But every one of them but one, Drew Brees you could throw in there, every one of them but one have a Super Bowl ring. True. And 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 all of them have played way longer than probably expected. I think it's just between the ears. I think it's the brains. And uh, I agree with you. And and I I think things like that, you can't coach, you can't teach, and any flaws that they have in their game that you want to quote unquote coach out, you're going to coach them out of those guys. You're not yeah. going to coach them out of Roethlisberger. He's never going to. No amount of coaching is going to make him not hold the ball longer. That's true. He because he, he, he just doesn't have it between the ears like those guys do. Yeah, and and so when we're talking about why teams draft players, I w I think that's the most foolproof thing. Is if there's no formula to say is this guy going to be great or is this guy going to be great, I want to know what the man is between the ears, just because that I as his coach can't control. Agreed. The the two guys that he worked with are are also incredibly smart. Oh, no doubt. No, uh, there's no, one's, there's no despite. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, to come but, up with this plan and to be able to to articulate and it they the way went, they do. They went very very detailed on this. Uh, the group licensing products that they discussed. If you haven't thought up already while you're listening to this, all the different ways that players could make money. Uh, this is stuff that the NCAA makes money off of that players get nothing, nothing from. Video games and mobile games. So that would be a split one that we talked about. Uh, everything else will be split too. That's trading cards that you can do. Jersey sales, calendars, digital goods on a case-by-case -case basis, and fat heads or cutouts. Now, I don't know what digital goods would be. Um, I have no idea. I'm going to bet like Facebook backgrounds or wall backgrounds that you can purchase for your phone. And stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess that would make sense. That would make sense. But, yeah, something like that, um, you know, the terms and conditions, of course, will vary greatly on these. But the licenses, I mean, it opens up it opens up a lot for the NCAA and for the schools to be able to, to profit off of these. Because the video game in and of itself, I just NCAA wonder, 14 is, was messed. Is this group of people just so close-minded and so set in their ways that they're they're just not budging. They're on this hill, and they're dying on this hill. We're not paying players. We're not putting it in escrow to pay them when they graduate. We're not doing any of this. And if they do choose to do it, there's no doubt in my mind they're going to want to say, we keep the money if you don't graduate. There's, yeah. there's no doubt that's going to be a sticking point for them because they want to find a way, how do we get a bigger piece of the pie? Yeah. I, I will tell you this. I think that they could make more money doing would, it this way. I would. Oh, well, they can't make more money than free labor, Gary. Agreed. They, that's not possible. Agreed. But adding the game, if so, they get to sell a game and they get a percentage of that. But then game, they also get all this other that, stuff with it. Right? They already so, have all this other. I understand. Stuff. They, they already got, sell fat heads. They already do all this stuff. I'm with you. I'm with the you. The only thing they can't do right now is the video game. 
So the well, no, no, no. You can't sell like like you can't sell like current players. Fat head or cut out no, or but the name sell, on the but jersey. They sell the jersey. But they sell with the, the jersey number. with the number. That's yeah, right. Yeah, because it's, it's just, just a number. It's the same. It's all the same, Gary. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. They've got four different tiers on this. So I already talked about this, but the premier tier, the minimum deal value is two hundred thousand for an academic year and one hundred fifty thousand for just one season. Uh, that's a national territory, and it is it, it it's exclusive, right? Tier one is also national with full marketing materials, exclusive to uh, exclusive with respect to car, uh, product class. That's seventy five thousand for an academic year, fifty thousand for a season, and that's minimum deal value. Territory two is regional or conference. So every state in which the PSA's conference has a member school, okay, uh, that's limited marketing uh, marketing materials, etc. Uh, that's twenty thousand bucks for the academic year, ten thousand for a season. I'm interested and then, in this one. And then you've got tier three, which is your state. Being a business owner, and that is uh, five thousand bucks for the academic year, oh. twenty five hundred for a season, and oh. that's minimum. Oh, if I could have, if if I could go back in time and have Deuce McAllister, well, it, for, it, for the North Mississippi, I uh, agreed that I ran for five thousand dollars. Yeah, I'd pay well, it, for an I'd academic pay it, year, I'd pay it a hundred times. Uh, and on top of that, local state, so within fifty miles of PSA's institution, this is this may be what you're on. Yeah. Uh, Two thousand bucks for academic year, one thousand for a season. Give me just give me give me Derek Rose but, in the Memphis area. But that's here's what I'm saying. Each player is going to be different. It's going to vary. Right. That's right. You're probably not going to get Rose. You're not going to get Rose for that cheap. And so and he'll be. You get Joey Dorsey for that. Exactly. But <laughs> that's the thing is that the clearinghouse serves as the licensee or licensor, right? The the, the agent between them. Okay. That way the student-athlete never has to try and negotiate. You don't have to worry about agents. You don't have to worry about all that. All of it's done through them. You just make money. And so as a student-athlete, you're good to go. Derrick Rose would have never seen this money. Would have never seen that money. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> but he's fine. He was number one pick in the draft. That's right. That's right. So, all right. I uh, I personally like the idea. I think it's great. No, you, and you and I have been arguing for this. We're, we're on the same page. These guys have to be compensated somehow. Well, if the NCAA doesn't do something, they will lose a court case eventually. Eventually. Eventually, and, we will find they, a judge. And this whole thing will blow right. up. Eventually, there will be a judge that will step up and say, no, sir, you don't get free labor. You want to call them student athletes? That's fine. You don't get to profit billions. Exactly. These, There's then, a problem there. You, you need to become a, um, I was thinking of the corporate term for it, but whatever a nonprofit is. That, well, and and they yeah. claim to be a nonprofit, but, you but can't they're claim profiting. to be a can't be a, can't be a nonprofit and make billions. Exactly, because they, you just spend it on stupid stuff like waterfalls. Yeah. All right, we'll uh, we'll jump into the blurbs next. <laughs> 